Hi, um, this is Sienda, Sienda writes on Twitter. And today I discuss a actual local book um, called McFeen in the Spirit of McFeenia Slata and Other Stories by Lori Kubitzile. Now, this is what I can only describe um, quite briefly as a collection of award winning stories and stories that should also in our words. I was just say that of all the short story collections that I have read in the past few years, this was the most entertaining. This was the most funny, this was the most light-hearted, but also very touching. And it has been written by a local writer, which made me very happy because in the past few years, to be very honest with you, I have not found many, many good um, Botswana writers. And I was very happy to stumble upon the title short story of this book that led me to this book. Now the title short story of this book, which I think I've already discussed in a previous um, video, I would say this is one of my favorite short stories of all time and I may be biased it might be because it's um, set in my country but I actually think that it's because of the way that she handles kind of African literature especially Botswana literature I really truly believe that she captures our own natural storytelling style which is to have as much humor as possible in a story um, or not take everything so I wouldn't say seriously but it's we we have a tradition of telling very light-hearted stories and it's very interesting that um, she is able to capture that sort of thing um, to capture the spirit of Botswana short stories even though I get the impression that she is not originally a Botswana citizen um, I actually think she's an American citizen originally I'm I'm not quite quite clear about the exact whereabouts in America where she is from but still she does a very brilliant job of portraying Botswana people in all kinds of different situations while maintaining an element of humanity um, while still um, discussing things that are not necessarily fun topics to talk about or to write about um, she manages to see like to shed some very light-hearted light on all of these stories and I think that really captures what it means to be a Motona storyteller and I absolutely enjoyed this book. Now like I said the title story which is the one I think I will talk about two or three of the stories that um, were actually very much critically acclaimed and which I also found myself connecting with at a very high level. Firstly I'll speak about in the spirit of McFinney's Latter. I'll try and find um, a link to a soft copy of that online if it's somewhere there. Um, and then maybe link it for you so you can understand why I absolutely love this short story. Anyway, this short story was actually shortlisted for the Kane Prize in 2011, which is quite, you know, amazing. And this is probably one of the funniest short stories I've ever read. And I think I've already discussed it in a video in which I spoke about the bed book of... What is it? The Bed Book of Short Stories by Mojaji Books um, that was published in 2011 or 2010. And I, I think I'll link the video below so you can see that um, discussion. Anyway, I'll tell the story again. So it's basically a story that is set in a village called, I think it's Nokanyana or Nokunyana. Let me just um, check. Yes, or something. I'll, if I'm wrong, I'll write the proper name down below. So it's set in a village in which there is McFinney's Latter and it is starts um, in the scene of his funeral where he has obviously died and it begins at the end basically. Um, and McFinney's Latter is known to be the biggest you know, lover boy in the village. He pleases all the very, very surly and mean um, women of the village and basically once a week takes them off the hands of their very hard... Um, her, uh, very much bothered husbands and very much abused husbands by their wives and b basically you know pleases them and what I enjoy about the story is what happens is um, it's, it's, a, it's a story based on sex to be completely honest with you but it is never quite um, clearly stated with which I think is a great honor 
to how very much conservative Botswana culture is about sex, especially amongst you know elders and the like. And she does a very good job of sensitively approaching the subject, making you laugh, making you think, but not making you feel offended on behalf of you know Bantu culture or you know Tsonga customs or African traditions or anything like that. And I very much enjoyed the way that she approached it, especially how she tells the story of you know, a village of men who, after the death of this huge lover boy, um, convene at a, is that the way that I would, meet at a bar every, once every week to discuss the strategy and how they plan on pleasing their wives when this lover boy is out of town. And it's very, 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 very well written, very funny, very engaging. You feel like a co-conspirator in the mission of these married men of this village and your emotions are involved and yet you are able to stand back and truly enjoy the beauty of the picture that she has painted. So I think that's my first favorite story in this book and I genuinely recommend that you read it. Um, secondly, it is... My second favorite story would be... I don't know if I should actually rent them, but the one that I will discuss now is Eddie Fisher won't be coming in today. And um, that is the story of a teacher who kind of mysteriously appears at schools and then disappears with one of the teachers and he tends to and she tends to you know pick particularly vulnerable men and what what i think an interesting thing about the story is that um there is this element of you know wondering if you know a, um, a mysterious being coming and giving someone momentary you know months of joy only for them to disappear in the end is that really like a such a terrible is this kind of philosophical debate that you have i mean is the disappearance of these people so terrible or should we be happy that after years of suffering um this mysterious teacher woman comes up and suddenly this person experiences a great deal of joy for a short time yes and it ends tragically yes but you know you start to wonder like you know the human dilemma of you know um, is death worse than a life of suffering? And I think that's what I, I come up with when I read the story. And I genuinely, truly enjoyed it. And I recommend the book based on those two stories. I'll name one more story that I loved just for one reason. As a writer, I really enjoyed reading it, which was Kulani's Eyes, which is the story of um, a woman who becomes like... Um, a fertility doctor like a traditional fertility doctor based on the fact that she was her mother's first child a mother who had been supposed to be barren before that um, medically and all that could not have children for 46 years Bulani is her first child and is named after you know rain like the drops before a big rain basically I think I may I may be inaccurate about that but the story is basically set around Bulani who um, becomes a traditional healer kind of seemingly reluctantly for women who cannot have children and then the story actually um, then moves on to um, Intle who is a really beautiful woman born to an upper class middle um, wait, what? upper middle class family in Khaburuni and who is having trouble having children and she is taken to that fertility doctor but the interesting thing is Intle is not particularly interested in having children and that is what she discovers as the time as the story goes on she is far more intrigued by the the kind of weaved paintings um or looms i don't know if i'm saying it right that pulani makes in her house and there's an interesting i say this one is interesting to read as a writer because there's a beautiful beautiful um description of the art the colors the feelings um that I invoked, invoked in each characters, um, in each character by the colors, the paintings, and um, all of that. To be honest with you, and how it ties in with the, with her own personal complexes. And I think, as you know, as a budding writer, as a young writer, that is a good story to like um, read as a means of understanding description, understanding linking outward physical elements to um, a character's own emotional progression. Um, as they move closer and closer to their own epiphany. So I think I've said as much as I could about this, otherwise I'd be talking forever. But 
In the Spirit of McPhineas Latter and Other Stories by Laurie Kubitile is a brilliant book and I very much recommend that you get it. It's a very fast read. As you can see, it's a very thin book. Um, it's about 116 pages and I think I read it over the course of this morning, to be honest with you. Oh, or maybe two nights. It's a very good book, especially to read like on transport when you're on a plane. You have a few minutes. There are much shorter short stories here. Um, that you can just look through when you have a break, but it is a book that will be very entertaining for you to read Very enlightening about Botswana by the way, and I was very happy to read a book about Botswana, about contemporary Botswana Which was different from the ones that we read in high school in which um, there's this kind of predictable thing about it and you know, a lot of books here are written with the agenda of raising HIV awareness. So, um, you know, you'd, so typically you'd be reading a book, getting attached to a character and knowing that they're going to die of, you know, HIV or something, I mean of AIDS. And, you know, it would be, it would really put a damper on um, your trust in reading, you know, Donna books. So I recommend that you get this book. Um, tell me what you think. And I will try and find a link to her website below. And yeah, so this is a great book to get and I'm just going to sign off. I hope you enjoy your Sunday. This is Sienda. Sienda writes on Twitter. SiendaWrites.com. ETC, ETC, ETC. Thank you. Bye.